Today we're going to look at business plans. Uh, obviously in future, lots of new businesses, they have wonderful growth plans. Existing businesses have growth plans. And quite often they need assistance from perhaps banks, venture capitalists, business angels, the government, or existing owners, uh, and maybe suppliers. And we look at that in the finance unit. And um, I've produced a video about that. Um, so you need to convince these stakeholders that it's a good idea for them to provide this assistance. Uh, banks are especially critical of new entrepreneurs because they produce very, very poor standard, very poor quality business plans. Now, we're going to look at YouTube. YouTube is owned by uh, Google. Um, YouTube has just announced that they are, are going to try and launch a music streaming service. So undoubtedly, some people at YouTube have gone to the parent company um, which is called Alphabet, and said, we think it's a good idea for us to get involved in music streaming. And they will probably have had to produce a business plan. Uh, and probably, the, the, or we hope, the people at Google or Alphabet, they probably have lots of questions that, is this a good idea or not? So some of the examples I'm going to give have to relate to the YouTube music streaming service. So I'm making this in May 2018, when they just made that announcement. Now, first up, up what are the elements of a business plan? What are the basic contents? Title page, uh, contents page, and executive summary. So the executive summary is basically summarizing the rest of the document and what it may, for example, have a uh, business description, a current business position, major achievements of the business, past financial information about uh, profits, various ratios, uh, maybe what are the financial requirements for this new business idea, and what are our future strategies? Now, this is why music streaming uh, is very, very attractive. This is the, the uh, growth of the industry. And you can see particularly, this is 2012 through to 2017. The market has grown uh, by something like 600%, which is a huge, big increase. And that's why it's so attractive. Then, what they will probably do is they'll try and say, well, where is the gap in the market? Um, how will we identify this gap? How are we going to fill this gap? Um, maybe we use a product positioning map. Sort of say, well, what is the total size of the market? How, what do we think is going to happen to the market in the future? Who are our key competitors? Maybe prepare a SWOT analysis on ourselves. Maybe prepare a SWOT analysis on our key competitors. Uh, maybe also uh, list these are the key directors or executives, these are their histories, history of success. This is the uh, market share um, to do with music streaming across uh, various uh, uh, continents. So this is Europe, Spotify is the number one. In Latin America, Spotify is number one. In the Middle East, however, we can see that SoundCloud is number one, and we don't see Spotify. Um, in North America, we can see Spotify is uh, number two. Number one is Pandora. And not included on here, um, in May 2018, Apple announced it has 52 million head subscribers. Um, so obviously they would be a key competitor as well. Then, the marketing plan, that might include lots and lots of market research, maybe primary research, maybe some secondary research, how is the company going to use the seven P's? Who's our target market? Maybe talk about market segments, market niches, and what have you. Uh, then they may well, if your company is producing things, obviously they're going to say, are we going to be uh, producing the items ourselves? Are we going to outsource some contract? How, what size facility are we going to need? How long will it take to build the factory? Where are we going to locate maybe the factory? On the next page, we're going to look at uh, the financial information. And this is something I found about Spotify, which shows that the uh, gross profit margin of Spotify is roughly 20%. Spotify loses money, even though I think worldwide is probably the biggest of the music streaming companies. It loses money. And part of the reason for that, every dollar a subscriber gives to uh, Spotify, 80% or 80 cents goes to the music companies who then distribute that money uh, towards the artists. And one assumes, therefore, that if YouTube 
uh, wants to become a music streaming service, it's got to then pay roughly 80% of all income from its subscribers to the uh, music companies. And it only then gets to keep 20% of the money to pay its other expenses. Now, obviously, music streaming and YouTube's existing model, whereby people go and watch videos and what have you, uh, is kind of complementary. But nevertheless, this might be a, a big disadvantage for, of this idea. So they're not really going to make that much profit, net profit, even if the uh, business grows and becomes a success, uh, because the gross profit is so small. So unless contracts are, when they're renewed in the future, seeing the uh, gross profits increase, this may well not be a very good market for YouTube to be entering. Now, this in the financial plan, uh, this is where you're going to put lots and lots of the uh, financial information. Uh, so for example, profit and loss comes balance sheet, maybe ratios, cash flow forecast, how long it may take to repay loans, forecast profit levels looking into the future. Uh, I know this is strictly speaking, the decision trees, um, and things like lose forces, the change we put in the first unit, but I placed it here. Investment business techniques. Uh, here you may, may also include various things to do with economic growth, is one would assume that if the economies continue to grow very, very quickly, people may be more likely to, to take out paid subscriptions. Uh, and then there may be other uh, factors such as exchanges, which may well have an influence on a wide range of different businesses. And uh, in the appendices, this is where lots and lots of the detail will be placed. So for example, a company where may well say, uh, put in some investment appraisals or uh, forecasts into the future, this maybe says this will pay uh, back in five years. And the detailed information goes into the appendices. So people can look at it there. This is looking at uh, music streaming services, subscription, uh, through to 2025, this is 2016, this is 2025, uh, there's roughly 106 million people in, in 2016 who were subscribing. They reckon by 2025, 336 million will be subscribing. So this obviously would be a very, very good reason for YouTube to try and enter the market. And that's all.